Welcome back, and we are now on the 11th day of our preparation for total consecration to Our Lady. Today's reflection from our manual for consecration is taken from the book Imitation of Christ, which speaks of fervent amendment of our life. This can be summed up in one word, and that is conversion. The book is very clear. It is not just simply amendment, but of fervent amendment. This makes a huge difference, and this should be our attitude, a burning desire, an eagerness to amend our lives, to convert daily, and to strive to become holy. We spoke of conversion last time, and we have to repeat this. Conversion is not a 12-day process. It is a lifelong task to get rid of the serious sins and our predominant sins, venial sins, which may lead us to commit mortal sins. Amendment is to look deep into ourselves honestly and to strive to see what are those that many times lead us to commit sin. Amendment is not contented with avoiding sins and faults but a positive attitude of striving and establishing a solid foundation of virtues. If we truly look deep into ourselves, we come to realize that we are weak and by ourselves alone, we are not capable of preserving the graces we receive from God. St. Louis de Montfort speaks of this in his book, True Devotion. By ourselves alone, we are truly not capable of preserving the graces. In fact, if I'm going to ask myself, where are those graces that I received from God since the age of reason up to now? Surely I could not give an answer with conviction. But one thing for sure, plenty of those graces got lost. But thanks be to God and this total consecration to Our Lady. I give myself totally to Our Lady, body and soul as her slave of love, and all the goods both interior and exterior. This is the safest way of preserving the grace we receive from God. For many times in our lives, we desire to do God's inspiration. But many times also, I tell you, slothfulness prevails. Today's passage from the Imitations of Christ gives us this beautiful advice. Fervent amendment of our life by practicing virtues, fighting vices and sins with the corresponding virtues, uprooting them one by one, pride with humility, envy with kindness, anger with forgiveness, slothfulness with zealous industry, greed with charity, gluttony with temperance, and pride with humility. Again, a reminder our sins and vices slows down our desire to advance in holiness, and so fervent amendment in life is necessary. It makes us capable of crossing many obstacles in life. We cannot allow our, ourselves to remain in those places where temptations and sin drowns us. It is so terrible to imagine a precious soul living among the swine. Well, there's so much abundance in the father's house. The decision of the prodigal son to make a man with great courage and humility pleases the father. The spirit of the world brings us to that same misery. And so we renounce that spirit. It was pride and sensuality that brings the son to such a terrible disaster. But what a grace from Our Lady. And how good it is to renounce the spirit of the world and to make amend immediately whenever we fall. And how good it is to have the sacrament of confession where we can hear the forgiveness of God. Let us ask Our Lady, Virgin Most Pure, to pray for us. This is one of her title in the litany. She is most pure. The magnificence of her purity shines more brilliant than the sun. The book of Revelation says, A woman clothed with a son. The children of Fatima saw a woman more brilliant than the sun. 
Oh, if we could only understood how God blessed those of pure of hearts. Our Lord says, Blessed are those of pure hearts, for they will see God. We say to our mother, Virgin most pure, pray for us.